Um, Max Moyer and was in Freight Train, Frontline, and then Heidnik. Sweet. Uh, let's go back in the past. What uh, what drew you to PA Hardcore? Um, just loved metal so much, and I loved hardcore, like New York hardcore. So we wanted to play that like New York style hardcore, super fast, like with breakdowns and more metal parts. So that's basically it. Freight trains. They're kind of weird how they started. Because Frontline, a long, a long time ago, Frontline, Frontline was a band, it was called Nine Circle. It was me, Diego on vocals, um, Justin from all the bands on drums, and somebody on bass, I can't remember. Mark. Mark was on bass. And we started playing, we, we recorded a tape, like a demo, in, I don't know, 96, I want to say? I don't know when it was. And I think. The only person that still has that is Joel Harcourt. I, I don't know anyone else that has that, but literally him. Or maybe my cousin might have it. Cousin Diego might have it, but I don't know where it is. And after that, we started playing faster and faster and faster. And Diego kind of wasn't too into it. He was more into like the slower, kind of like sheer terror, kind of like, you know, that kind of stuff. And Jared and I started talking. Like we all talked at shows and we all had bands. And then Jared was like, hey, let's all like play together. And we wanted... Jared on vocals and Diego, and I guess they kind of weren't, I mean, there's no bad vibes, but Diego wasn't feeling it. He was like, well, I kind of want to do my own kind of thing, you know? And I was like, all right, cool, whatever. So he kind of left, and then we just became frontline with me on guitar. Then we got Matt, Matt Garvey on bass. Justin always, Justin and I have played together for about 17, 18 years. And Jared, Jared stayed on vocals. And then from there, Slave and Diego started freight train with a couple of kids from Jersey, Cappy and those. Cappy was actually No Escape. I thought I think it was No Escape. And a bunch of other bands. And then they asked me to join a few months later to play guitar and write a few songs for them. And I did. And it was like songs that were a little too metal for Frontline. Then we just, I just kind of like, we put them all together and they became a couple of Freight Train songs. And then from there we all played. And then I had to bail on Freight Train because Frontline, we got signed to this tiny label, Liberty Records. So I, we had to play out a lot. We had to do a lot of stuff and play out. And I could, I had to bail. And Diego and Slave, they were cool about it. And they were like, whatever, they just found somebody else. And then that's it. And then, when, then that band broke. That band became Heidnik after that. Because it was getting so metal and so like, so just crazy that that became Heidnik. We just broke up Frontline after a few years. And then Jared left. He wasn't into it, it was a little too metal. And then the rest is just all hiding for like the next nine years, whatever it was. So there's so many really good bands. Like I liked I always loved like um like when when Hyde was playing, I loved all the suburb kids. Like Set of Blaze always toured with those guys. They were such a blast. Um Dysphoria, Todd also. Like I can name a zillion bands. Um those two are the first to come I'm drawing a blank right now of all the bands I played with. And they're and who's the, what was that Jersey band? They're really awesome. It was, um, Burnside. Yeah, Alex and Burnside. Yeah, Those yeah. guys are awesome. Yeah. They always played in Philly. And, uh, Clubber Lang was awesome. And then, uh, Punishment, obviously. Joe and Punishment were fucking sick as hell. I have so many bands, I don't know. Mix Band was really cool. Um, I don't know, so many really good bands. I mean, half of them were shut down because of fights. Yep. Yeah. So the ones that were my favorite were like Kill Time, mm -hmm. always a blast. Bob used to book shows there all the time, that was awesome. Um, and Stalag, we weren't actually allowed to have show, hardcore shows at Stalag. It was, it was like, like a long, long, long time ago, it was all punk rock kids. And they just weren't into like, I guess tough, tough bands or whatever. So it was like really elitist back then, it was really like, nah. Whatever. And then me and a couple of kids, like Robbie even, we talked to Tony, who was like, living, punk rock Tony, who was like living there. And, and he, he actually let us have the Frontline Record release show with In My Eyes and Freight Train and Dysphoria, Burnside, I don't know who else, uh, somebody else. And um, yeah, so that was probably my favorite place I ever played, probably Stalag like 13. Played the Trock too, that was pretty cool. And I, I like the smaller venues like that, like Kill Time and always Stalag, it was, it was their, their blast. 218. I have, I have that. I have that. Do you have a bunch of them if you want? Sure. Um, set of Blaze. 
Yeah, live fast, die. Yeah. Well, let's live fast, die, seven ways. And then Wait. five across the eyes, but Liam was in jail. Mm -hmm. So when they went up and played without him, it didn't sound that great, but people still liked it. And it was just like, I remember um, the singer, kept, I can't remember his name, he Pat, yeah, Pat, he kept getting pissed off because like the drummer kept fucking everything up. And so Pat turns around and just finally fucking fed up after fucking up like three or four songs. He grabs the mic and just like, wings it at the fucking the drummer and hits him in the head while he just bong through the whole thing and everybody goes, oh my god. And like, you hear me in the back and I just piss myself laughing. I'm and then they got off stage, it was just great. I'm dumb, dude. That was the wrong show. I oh, well, I didn't show. One, one, that, that's an awesome one. Anal Blast. You guys played with Anal Blast. Oh my god, yeah. And the dude sat there and drank the moonshine the whole time. Remember oh, that? The dude, yeah. the, the fat dude from Anal The singer, Blast. the big fat dude. He, he like had to use your guy's drum kit and shit. Didn't he almost get like beat down by everyone? Yeah, we all, I, he said some shit. Like, my drummer <laughs> was like pretty cool about Tarragats, I think. Letting the stuff out. Yeah, Tarragats, yeah. I totally remember that. So we got called in last, kind of last minute to do a show, and um, they were like, hey, would you guys want to come up? And I was like, yeah, whatever, we'll come up, hang out. And we rocked out, and then they went on, and the dude was like, hey man, can I, um, can I borrow your, your drum set? And I was like, well, that's my, it's not my stuff, I don't know if my drummer's going to be really cool with that. And then Justin was like, well, I'm going to get the fuck out of here, I don't want some fucking dude using my shit. And then Joe, who's booking the show, uh, not Joe Harper, Joe Kudo. Yeah, he was like, yo, please let him use your shit. Please let him. We're like, alright, whatever. So, we let him use our stuff, but it, it was just like the, you know, bass, toms, floor tom, no snare, no anything. And um, they were just like shredding and like, fucking grind bullshit, whatever the fuck they play. Like, it was like, yeah, it was like horse shit. And we're all sitting there waiting. Everybody's like literally just watching, like, just fucking kind of bored. And the dude's just like trying to be like all crazy on stage. Like, oh, we're, we fucking. Fuck dead bodies and rape girls and shit and we're all like, what the fuck is a fuck, dude? And um, he just kept talking shit. I can't remember. I wish I could remember, dude. It was Chrissy he was talking to, that young girl Chrissy. Yeah. So something happened where he started talking to her and then sure, sure. she got offended. Yeah. yeah. Something happened where he's like disrespecting her and then um, somebody was just kind of like, yo, man, that's not cool. Whatever. He's like, oh, fucking, we'll all beat you up. I was like, yo, you can't beat nobody up. I'm gonna, I'll fuck you up. You and your whole band. Everybody here will fuck you up. So get your shit and get the fuck out of here. I got that. And then they didn't say shit, and it was all weird, and awkward, and quiet. And then somebody threw like a fucking plastic bottle at the dude. And I think they got the point that they were they came out trying to act fucking hard rock, and I guess they went back to fucking Ohio to yeah. blow their fucking brother or whatever. Are you at the night two eighteen with uh, the D Snyder son? No, I heard that dude got fucking housed. I heard he got his ass whipped. <laughs> Did you just tell the story? Was he well, was he was he wearing like some fucked up outfit? And, yeah, and, yeah, like, like, like they hit him or some shit. Yeah, yeah. What, could, do you know the story? Could you tell? Uh, I wish you know what Eric yeah, would he know was it. there because I was supposed yeah. to interview him that night, but I want that story. For that. Brian Yan yeah. might have been there. Or no, yeah, yeah. It was, it was like they saw two life crew there. It was pretty cool too. At two, I, at I swear 18? to God, they booked two life crew there. At two eighteen. Yeah, like ten years ago. It was a long, long, long time ago. I wasn't there, but I heard like I was like hanging out one night, biking around, and where I was like, oh, by the way, uh, you just missed uh, two life crew. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, we just had him up there. It was awesome. There was all these girls dancing around. And hey, do you want to, uh, we're going through clubs. Do you want to run through 218 since we uh, freaking love that place? God, 218 was a fucking. That was like Studio 54, but punk rock with hardcore kids and like hipster kids. And everybody's like doing cocaine in the bathroom and dope and like a fucking glitter ball. And it was a stage and it was crazy, man. It was like. Chris, Chris had 80s nights there Wednesdays, didn't he? Mm -hmm. That was our night. He was at, he was there Wednesdays. That's where I started DJing, actually, because I took his night. He didn't want to do it anymore or something. And I took Thursdays or something, and he was doing something else. And he was doing more like indie rock stuff. Did then, more C nights. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, like, Chris, what are you doing? <laughs> Everyone's like, dude, come on, pick it up a little bit. <laughs> Put on fucking Anything. something. Put some metal on it. Put a Slayer on it. No, dude, I'm gonna do this. Alright, cool. <laughs> and then, like, Dave got all pissed off. He's like, yo, you gotta fucking. Uh -huh. And, um. No, that is the one night. No bullshit. He asked Chris. Chris got pissed. Because Dave from 218 was like, yo, you gotta pick this shit up. And, um. You know, Chris got all, like, pissy about it. He's like, well, if you don't wanna hear my fucking music, I'm just fucking bailing. I'm peacing out. And he, like, got his shit and he left. And Dave was like, yo, um, do you wanna just start DJing or whatever? I was like, yeah, whatever. And. Because it was like a dual deck CD thing, so uh -huh. I just bought a bunch of CDs and started playing like... I didn't know that. That's I a totally true story. Uh -huh. Completely true. Ask Chris, he got pissed, he left. He got all pissed off and left. And he was just like, fuck this shit, I don't have to deal with this. But never know. I was like, alright dude, peace, see you later. You, know, you don't have to leave, just play fucking... 
Just play Come On Eileen or some shit. Just <laughs> yeah. play, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to fucking leave. Christ. Right. Punk rock proms. Oh, God. Absolute best. 80s punk rock proms at 218. I still have a flyer upstairs. I, from when Chris was DJing, I tore the one down and he took the other one. I still have it upstairs somewhere. And yeah, I have, I have pictures of that. I should have brought that down too. I have pictures of like, yeah, with that stupid Chinese weird hat thing in it. That fucking, looks like a fucking hubcap. Uh -huh. It's got a fucking point on it. it looks like a rice picker. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> it, that's it. I swear I have the picture upstairs. He was wearing like a three piece suit with that stupid fucking rice picker hat. And awesome. Our first, sh our, the first Frontline show mm -hmm. was with Bad Luck 13. It was us, it was like 90s, yes, Joe, he booked it. It was 96, 97, I don't know. It was us, um, 25 to Life. Yeah, Bad Luck 13 obviously closed. Was it Burnside? Yeah, Burnside was the band. It was, I think, Mick said the same show earlier. Nope. Yeah, it ended up being like this crazy fight at this like little tiny hall, literally the size of this living room and the kitchen. And no bullshit there had to be, like at least. 100, 125 kids. That doesn't sound like a lot, but like when yeah. you have like a room full of people, like it's too tight. Yeah. If you have like 20 people in this room right now, you're like pretty packed. You're really sick. Like, people would be a lot. Yeah, it's like crazy. Yeah. And some shit happened, and some stupid fight broke out. Some dude put a butcher knife out on somebody. Yeah. This is gnarly. It's so intense. And we're like, what the fuck? And um, there was this. I can't remember his name. We have it on film where somebody jumps over somebody. Just like, Cracks a kid in the face and just starts this whole big fucking thing. And there's like, then bad luck goes on. There's like holes in the walls and bats in the fucking wall. And like cherry bombs and fucking, fucking, what are those things called? Roman candles out the window. And I remember Jared was like, yo, we, we better get the fuck out of here. I was like, I'm out, peace. And like, I grabbed my fucking, I just got this Marshall cab. I was like, I'm out of here. I grabbed the cab. We wheeled it across the street. And you hear them going on. That's when Met was on the drums, I think. You do the opening, do, 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 and all you hear is like yelling and smoke. I was like, fuck this, dude. We went outside like this and just watched everybody run and fucking Tim chasing with a chainsaw or bat, whatever the fuck it was. I was like, I'm gonna go home and fucking eat food. It sucks. Ha! <laughs> My shit all fucked up. I'm out of here. Dude, those guys are absolutely incredible. How about? It started a long time ago. We were like, it was me, past. His name's Alex Rackman. It's not fucking pass. His name's Alex. And this kid, uh, he used to write Spy. He's an absolutely incredible writer. Um, we, all, we were all like graffiti kids. And Alex and I were taking a lit class. It's where Nine Circle came from, from Dante's Inferno. And we were just kind of like joking around with the name. Like, it would be kind of cool to like just write IX everywhere when we like graffiti or whatever. And um, it started that, that's how it started. And then it became like the band. We're like, oh, we should sing the band Nine Circle. That's pretty cool. Because, you know, we have like sing alongs and stuff. It'll be a lot of fun. And then from there, that band became Frontline. And then from there, it just became like a whole like crazy crew of just like kids that are all from Philly that all hung out together. And Jersey kids too. Uh, but it was mainly Philly kids that all hung Because we all grew up around the same area like Frankfurt, Kenzo, like well, that whole Fort, Port Richmond, Fishtown. We all grew up like around here ish, kind of. And North Philly, me and my cousin grew up in North Philly. And so from there, it just became this like crazy fucking insane hardcore group. It was just fights. But not, not fights to just be tough, but fights like beat white power kids. Uh, there's just a million stories like skinhead kids used to come down and just like whip their asses. And there was like, you know, like the typical dudes that are like at a show, they don't know what the fuck's going on. So they try to act like hard rock dudes and they get like beat the fuck up. Because they don't, they don't know a pile on a sing along. And, they think like, yo, this guy just kicked me in the face, and then he punches the wrong guy, and then he gets fucking rolled on by like eight dudes. So it was just like, to kind of like back each other up kind of thing. Right. And that's where that came from. And then from there, it just became other stuff. And then, by then, it just, I guess it just blew up. Bro. So I was saying, and we were just talking about the other day, me and my boy were talking about that, about um, just people just fighting at shows, like stupid shit that you didn't, you, you know, it, and it's always, it's always some dude or some, a couple of like, like frat kids or jock kids or like dudes that don't understand what's going on. When somebody's like moshing, they fucking, you know, hit you in the back of the hand. You know, you, you put your hands on the wrong dude, again, you're gonna get, you're gonna get beat the fuck up. And it happened a lot, a lot, a lot. Cause they don't understand what's going on, you know? They hear their younger brothers hate records, they wanna come out and fucking like, yeah, let's fucking, 
Let's fucking get drunk and fucking oh, hit, hit some fucking girl in the face. That'd be awesome. Uh, get like stabbed in a show. And like, Sorry. Do you have a memorable bad luck show besides that one? The one that really stuck out? Dude, there's so many of them. What the fuck was the one? That's the one that was my favorite. The first one we played with was like our first show with them. So mm -hmm. I was just like, I think I was there for a show. I'm not positive. But that was like probably my favorite one. But there's one they, I was at um. Oh yeah, it was like three. I don't know where it was. Three years it was. It's some fucking punk rock. Fucking festival in New York City. It was free. I went with a couple of friends of mine. They were like, yeah, let's go because I was gonna be. I was in New York anyway. So they were like, well, let's go. Uh, let's go to this like free punk rock show, or whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. And um, I called. Um, I texted Goldberg, I was like, oh, you guys playing or whatever? He's like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna be playing like around four o'clock in the afternoon. So we showed up, we biked, we took a ferry there, because it was a free, I swear to God, a ferry from, from ground, I think it was from Ground Zero. Is it called Washington Island? I don't know what the fuck it's called. So it's, a, it's like a 15 minute ferry, and it's this beautiful park, and then I see all these like crusty kids, all these punk rock kids, and I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And you go down and like, oh, Negative Approach was there. That was awesome, uh -huh. yeah, I forgot about that. And then, we got to see Bad Luck, and they're fucking like, there's kids, they're throwing bottles, Bad Luck, the dudes are throwing bottles into the, um, just into the, like, the, the pit where everybody's moshing and shit, but there's not moshing, people are just standing, like, what the fuck is going on, there's fire and barbed wire, and, like there's this girl that's half naked running around, and dudes are like literally like wrestling and throwing, like suplexing, like throwing each other into the glass, and this one kid, I have a picture of it somewhere. One kid's back is just complete. Like, this guy Tiger shredded his fucking back. It's like long ass punk rock hair. He's like, yeah, dude, that fucking, that was fucking awesome. I was like, yeah, that's fucking, that's for the birds. That's gnarly. I'll just sit back here. I sat in the back the whole time and just watched. I was like, fucking <laughs> retards. Throwing, like, the one dude had, like, this kid, he hit this kid in the face with a fucking, what's that called? The fucking, the light thing? That fucking. Flushing like, tube? Yeah, flushing tube. Just right smack him in the face. The kid's like, yeah. <laughs> I like, it was so metal, he's like, yeah, let's I keep it going, it, man. I call one of those bad luck at hell. The way it's had the Hellfest riot. Oh, I yeah, I heard that. I saw the video. That's I was fucking working. insane. I was working for relapse at that time. I came around. Oh, cool. I came around the corner. I was just like, hey, what's up? And I, like, really? Was, like, the dude was waiting for just the head to come by. It was awesome. There was so much. They had a cow head once. Long time. Oh, there was this. Do you remember that club? It only didn't last long. It was in South Jersey. It was called XYZ. No, I don't know if I were talking about it. It was like right over the bridge, and it was it was bad luck. Um, I don't think it was a video. Was it No Redeem? Yeah, it was bad luck, No Redeem, Switch Value, and a couple other bands. I don't know who else. And Wait. they closed obviously, and then they threw, like they locked the doors, and they threw like a cow head out, full of blood and eyeballs and shit. It was just like, all over the place. And that's when Jonathan was still alive. He jumped and just like. Crawling on everybody's heads, he's like, dude, he's like six foot four, and just like plastered on top of everybody, uh -huh. and the cops came. And that's the same night that, um, like, I don't know why, like, it's like skinhead kids show up at the show, and they like, wrecked this guy's car, and they beat the fuck out of him, because they told him to leave, and he wouldn't leave, and so, hmm. they destroyed his car. That was pretty cool, actually. Well, you did not know Mikey Wild, did you? I did, a long time ago, when I was, when I was a kid, it's, not even yet into like hardcore. Like I was. He was like, there before any of us. Dude, he was. He just died recently. I didn't know. He? Yeah. He was fucking. I saw. Him, it, it was uh before. Uh, what's Rock and Roll Plus now? He's like a fucking skateboard shop or some shit. Whatever it is, when South Street was still South Street, when it was actually cool to hang out there and buy albums, and go to yes. Third Street Record and uh, Noise Pollution, all these really cool places that had like really good vinyl and stuff. They had um. Rock and Roll Plus is one of those places too. Like tons of cool t-shirts. It didn't rip you off either. And you could like literally sit there all day and just listen to albums. Rock and Roll Plus was the shit. They Dude, that was the shit. Jazz, the copies of yeah. the Italian art. Oh my god. And the one day we went in there and I, um, it was Mikey Wilde playing a fucking show. It was just him on a guitar with a fucking little amplifier. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I was like, Yo, what the fuck is this dude doing? So he's just like shredding, like fucking rocking. Like, There's no tomorrow. And then he's, he's, he's like doing some Pete Townsend shit. He's like flipping his arms around. And then he got, he got so into it, he just got up and kicked his fucking amp over. And it fell over and just like kind of exploded. And it was all quiet and everybody was just watching the whole time. And I was like, what the fuck is up with this dude? I was like, Yo, I'm, just, I'm gonna buy an album and bail. Fuck this shit. I'm not into this. I was scared as shit. 
the, the best years of my entire life were, were, was going to hardcore shows. And I don't go as much anymore. I still go like hang out. I mean, like this is hardcore, so I'm not saying hi to people, but I just never really have time to do stuff. But um, those were like that's the last. I guess the best years of my entire life were from like 1996 to like probably like 2000ish. And then from there, everything after that was all high nick touring and doing crazy shit. But um. Cause they, yeah, those are the absolute best times of my life. Going to shows, going to TLA, Kill Time, fucking Stala, I don't know where else, I'm just a zillion. I get to play with Bold, I got to play with so many bands, it's so much fun. So much fucking fun. In my eyes, it was one of my favorite, they're from Boston. But I, but I played, I got to court Madball, that was fucking cool. I mean, it was only a weekend, but it was pretty fucking amazing. Scarhead, I played with Scarhead, I always loved Scarhead. Marauder, my favorite, my, probably my favorite New York hardcore band. Right. Personally, I was straight edge until about six years ago. And I rarely ever drink now. I'm through drugs. I don't smoke. Like, it was the great turning point in my life. It was the best, could never take it, never take it back ever again. It was like the coolest part of my entire life. Going to hardcore shows and playing shows and having kids sing along with all the stuff you wrote was like, super highlight. That's it. It's awesome. Get a hardcore band. It's really cool.